Today we'll be diving into the DJI FPV drone experience. This is my one year later review and if you're on the market of buying the DJI FPV, well you've come to the right place because I'm gonna share with you all the good things and all the bad things about this drone. So let's go. DJI have marketed this drone as the best beginner drone for FPV pilots and the second phrase was the best cinematic FPV drone. Now with this second phrase I totally agree because this is the ultimate cinematic FPV experience. You can make videos like this and you can get really creative and nothing beats the immersion and the experience of flying this drone once you put on the DJI FPV goggles which are really out of this world. I mean the video quality on this is just... But if you want to do videos like this well I'm just gonna go out and say it's pretty much impossible to make such freestyle flow videos like you see here. This is from Sled FPV and he's one of my favorites FPV freestyle flow drone pilots on YouTube and yeah and I know it's weird to give a shout out to a bigger channel but you know it's just out of respect so if you want to fly the DJI FPV drone like that I'm just gonna say it's pretty much impossible. I mean you can do it on a bigger scale but not so tight and so kind of tight spaces and fast sharp turning because this thing flies really like like a brick. So this is why cinematic FPV is for the DJI FPV drone. And the phrase that this drone is the best drone to start your FPV journey, well I'm just gonna go and say you do not learn to drive a car in a Ferrari. Because the FPV experience overall is about building the drone, it's about learning about the motors, the batteries, the electronics, the soldering, the charging the batteries, discharging the batteries, the connections and all of that basically brings an FPV experience so you know how the drone flies and when you crash it and you do crash it it, you can fix it pretty much on the spot. If you crash this thing it's pretty much game over. Now if you're going into this with the idea that you're gonna be very careful and never crash it because it's a 1300 euro drone with the goggles and the remote, well I'm just gonna go out and say FPV equals crashing. So you will crash it and there is a special procedure that you need to follow once you do. Now you can find videos on YouTube showing people that are repairing this drone by themselves but I would really recommend to use the official DJI repair service. Now this video is not not sponsored by DJI but just hear me out because my experience I think will tell you everything you need to know. So when I crashed this drone about the fifth time I flew it I broke three arms, uh, the motors were gone, like the, the, the antennas, the, the cables, everything was severed, the camera was okay, the battery was okay, the, the upper shell was completely cracked and I was like oh my god I did not get the DJI Care Refresh insurance which cost like 250 bucks. So I thought it's gonna cost me about 500 euros or dollars, I mean it's pretty much the same now, to get this drone repair so I sent it back to the DJI official repair service which is in the Netherlands like three countries away and it took about three weeks to get it back. Now I could have gotten it back sooner but I messed up something with the packaging so make sure you go online and see how you need to package it and label it to get it back and forth in proper time. But when they sent me the offer as to how much the repair is going to cost it was 126 euros or dollars with shipping plus they put in an extra top shell so they replaced the broken one and added a completely new one so I was like oh my god I mean it's just not worth to get the care refresh or to actually repair this thing because this was repaired by professionals and it was tested out and I pretty much got back a completely new drone. Now later on I got the arm braces which help a little bit if the drone tumbles at slow speeds but if you crash at full speed this is not going to help. Now you can get this from DJI or from Amazon they cost around 20 or 30 dollars euros and yeah they do help but they just pretty much also add to the weight because this thing is really heavy. It really flies like a brick. Now the best advice anybody can give you if you're starting out in FPV is to spend, I'm just gonna say, 50 hours in the simulator. Yes, I know it seems like a lot, 50 hours, but trust me, the more hours you put in in the simulator, the easier it will be to fly this thing in manual. And of course, you need to unlock the manual mode in the settings. First of all, you need to assign the manual mode to the M button on the remote controller. And then you need to go into the controller settings and disable the altitude control or altitude limit or something like that. And then you can use manual mode. Now, DJI have made these precautions because if you would just switch it to manual, without any experience, well that's pretty much a short crash. <laughs> And there are so many videos online where people are crashing these drones like crazy. The reason for that is, well, when you fly it in manual mode, you have like full control of the drone. You basically control all the three rotations and the thrust. And that's it. The drone does nothing else. In contrast to like a standard Mavic type drone, where the drone basically flies itself, you just tell it where to go. So if you push on the joystick forward, the drone is basically going to do all the work and it's going to fly forward. Here, if I push the joystick all the way forward, it's just going to start spinning like crazy. So it's 
it's a completely different experience. And if you want to learn the difference between FPV and a standard Mavic GPS controlled video drone, I will put a link at the end of this video and you can click on that. And I really encourage you to watch that video because I explain in detail the big differences between FPV and standard video GPS. Now, as for the simulator, I would strongly suggest to use the Liftoff video game. It's again, not a sponsored video, but in that game, which costs about $20 on Steam and on their website, I will put a link in the description. You get the DJI FPV drone package as a free downloadable content, and you get this drone within the game. And the cool thing is, as I was testing it out and I'm playing it pretty much almost like every day, the drone in the game actually feels the same as the drone in reality. The only thing that's different is that you don't get that camera camera shake which is present when you're looking through the goggles and it's kind of typical. Of course, the recorded video on the drone is smoothed out and kind of stabilized and has no jitters, but when you're flying it, you constantly get those kind of teeny tiny shakes which are a little bit a distraction if you come straight from the video game. And the second difference is that teeny tiny bit of latency that you get which is around like 30 milliseconds. And now you might notice it or you might not, I do notice it, but it's not a big problem and you get used to it really fast once you start flying this thing for real. And when it comes to latency, I think the package that you get with the DJI FPV is kind of the lowest latency you can get, especially if you fly it in the low latency mode, which is just basically full HD or 1080p video recording. And you get, I think around 20 or 25 milliseconds, which I mean, you will probably not even notice that. Now we come to the video camera. The video camera on this is, as you probably know, 4K 60 or 50 frames per second. It's around 100 megabits per second of data transfer, which is quite a lot actually. The only problem is that it's a small sensor camera. Now, I don't know what the size of the sensor on this thing is, but I'm pretty sure it's kind of the same as the DJI Osmo Action. So if you have any experience with action cameras, it's going to be pretty much the same to work with these videos. They have a really beefy codec on this, so you will probably need to use optimized media or have a much faster computer. But overall, you get a decent video quality. The dynamic range is decent enough. And yes, it's not a big production type video camera and you can surely use it for YouTube videos or for small production type videos that you see in commercials or so on. So yeah, the camera is fine and I don't know why people attach their GoPro cameras onto this because it's pretty much the same thing. But the main reason you might want to get this drone is the actual experience when you're flying this. Now, once you put the goggles on, you're so immersed in the drone that if you have any sort of motion sickness issues, you will be motion sick when you fly this because you really feel like you're in the drone. And once you get a hang of it, and once you start flying that cinematic FPV through some trees or through you know, alongside rocks or mountain ranges, this is really just, I mean, it's like the best experience experience ever and after one year I still no I still have shaky hands whenever this thing lands and I'm happy that I didn't crash it and it's just phenomenal so if the scenery is really nice this is going to give you like the best experience ever and it's all due to very high quality video feed that you get from the goggles so this is a digital connection which means that the video quality is really good and the range well I've never tested it out the remote controller is supposed to go to about 10 kilometers which is like insane I mean you should never fly that far because since you need to register this and you need a license to officially be able to fly this thing, you can see mine right over here. Well, you always need to have the drone in eyesight and since you're flying with the goggles, you will actually need a separate person that has his own eyes on the drone as you're flying it. So from the legislation point of view, yes, it's a little bit trickier than just flying a normal you know, Mavic type drone where you're actually looking at it and on the screen, which is also really hard to do at the same time. But this requires a person to be alongside with you. Yeah, I'm breaking that rule a lot. So don't tell anybody. Okay, so those were kind of the good things about the drone, but there are some bad things when it comes to flight performance. Now, you might have heard on YouTube that this thing flies like a brick because it's really heavy. The motors are really strong, but kind of the, the whole design of the drone is really, well, I'm just going to say it, you know, it's not a very high performance drone. For cinematic FPV, it's okay, but for any sort of freestyle flying like this, it's going to be quite difficult to be perfectly honest, and I wouldn't want to even attempt to try something like this unless I would have like a second you know unit drone as a backup and the biggest problem is the propeller wash now if you don't know what propeller wash is it's basically when the drone is dropping downwards and you punch the throttle the whole turbulence that the drone is creating as it's falling down kind of makes the propellers not work because there's turbulent air and the propellers are basically spinning in empty so the drone starts to shake and it takes a little while for the thrust or for the power to actually kick in so if you're going from up high and want to go really low to the ground well if the propeller wash occurs you're pretty much going to drop it on the ground and the drone is going to crash that's how i crashed it my first time and i've learned about propeller wash since then so this is the 
biggest issue that I have with this. Therefore, it's pretty much useless to do any sort of real, you know, tricks, tight turns around trees, dropping down. And now you can do this and you can see professional drone pilots on YouTube, for instance, showing how this can be flown like a, like a crazy, you know, freestyle race type whatever drone but honestly those guys have a lot of experience and if they crash this drone they probably don't care because they got it for free if you pay like 900 or whatever euros or dollars that this thing costs just the drone yeah it's it's kind of expensive to just toy around so definitely simulator and be sure that propeller wash is a big issue alongside with the weight so my final thoughts and suggestions on buying this drone if you really want to get into fpv well if you want to get the cinematic ultimate fpv experience and have kind of a smooth transition between going a video type drone to an FPV drone, this could be the way to go. Just make sure that you have it locked in your head that it's going to crash, you will have to send it back for repairs and it's gonna cost a little bit of money and time delay and it will definitely give you the most surreal experience when you fly it. So just for that experience, that FPV high quality video feed, you no know, motion sick kind of thing, yeah, it's definitely worth purchasing. So those are my thoughts. I had some really interesting experience with this drone and I made some interesting videos so I would suggest it to anybody who's willing to spend the money, willing to spend the time in the simulator and of course willing to get the best experience of any sort of FPV flying. So thanks for watching, if you guys have any comments or questions leave that down in the comment section and please consider subscribing because this really helps the channel to grow and of course the like button, that's the one you want to press right now. So thanks for watching. I will leave you guys with this video over here where I explain pretty much everything that is a difference between FPV and a standard Mavic type video drone. Click on this one if you want to stay on the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.